Hey, we're continuing our craziness from the new St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism and learning from Life Preserver Jesus. And we're continuing with the... This is Lesson 12 in this book. This is the marks and attributes of the church. So I'm just reading some crazy statements from this chapter. There are a lot in here. It says on page 80 of Lesson 12, All are obliged to belong to the Catholic Church in order to be saved. So if you want to be saved, you've got to be a member of the Catholic Church. I didn't realize they taught that. Uh, but there is a way out of that. Persons who are not members of the Catholic Church can be saved if, through no fault of their own, they do not know that the Catholic Church is the true Church, but they love God and try to do His will. For in this way, they are connected with the Church by desire. So basically, by reading this book, I've eliminated my place in heaven unless I join the Catholic Church, according to this. Don't and do it! Don't do it! <laughs> But if you, if you don't know anything about the Catholic Church, but you love God and try to do His will, then that's then God's going to um, let you in because you're you're just like the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church also loves God and tries to do His will. So you did the best you can. So we'll let you in. But if you know about the Catholic Church being the only true Church, then you you got to join it or else you can't be saved. Okay, here's another great statement from this chapter. When Christ, our head, looks down from the cross at the church, he sees Mary. The church is Mary. She is Holy Mother Church, containing, as it were, all the members of the church in herself to unite them to Christ, our head. Mary is the mother of Christ in the flesh, but in the life of grace, she is his bride. So Jesus marries his own mother, according to this. Sounds kind of perverse. Doesn't the Bible say that you can't marry your own mother? Those who marry their own mother are guilt. Uh, it's an abomination to the Lord and it's worthy of death. I believe the book of Leviticus talks about that. Uh, but according to this, the Christ, the most holy one of all who has never sinned, is, is going to marry his mother. Mary is the mother of Christ in the flesh, but in the life of grace she is his bride. Her divine life came from his, not his from hers. What? Huh? I got so many. <laughs> what Pope Pius XII says of the church is true of her. Quote, As a second Eve, she came forth from the side of the new Adam in his sleep on the cross. End quote. What does that even mean? I was going to say. Well, okay. well, it goes on to tell you, she is the new Eve leading all her children to the cross, the tree of life, to drink from Christ's open side the living waters of the Holy Spirit, the new wine of holy love. So basically what he's saying, if I understand it correctly, is when Jesus was on the cross, the soldier came and pierced his side and blood and water came out of it. And what that was, that blood and water oozing out of Jesus' side was really the new Eve. It was Mary as the second Eve coming from, from his side and leading all people to drink of that water and blood that came from his side. What do you think of all this? All right, let's back it up to the beginning. Number one, Jesus looks down and Mary is supposed to be all sinners within her. Is that right? Yeah, they got it in all caps here. It says, the church is Mary. She is the Holy Mother Church, containing, as it were, all the members of the church in herself to unite them to Christ our head. So then she's a big fat sinner, number one, because everybody sins, all the sinners are coming to her. So basically she's taking the place of Jesus because when Jesus was on the cross, 
house. He was dying. He was his blood was atoning for all the blood the sins of the world. So now she's Jesus. Then who's on the cross? It says Jesus, but if she's being Jesus, then who's Jesus? <clears throat> and then she is, besides being his mama, she's his bride. Well then then that okay, then Jesus is God, but they don't recognize Jesus as God. So um, that, that, that goes off on so many different ways. Number one, it's disgusting, perverse. It's it it just it makes me mad. Makes me you know I, I, I I'm stuttering because it's just so filthy, perverse, disgusting. That oh, we're gonna drink. You know, of course it's not literal, but we're gonna drink the water that came from. But didn't the verse say that when they poked him, it was just water that came out? It wasn't blood? No, it was blood and water. It was blood and water. Okay. But either way, so now the Catholics are thinking they are, besides drinking the blood of Christ, they're thinking, they're standing, picture it. Jesus is on the cross. He's hovering over you on these two pieces of wood. The soldier comes up, stabs him in the side, and you're standing underneath him trying with your mouth open, trying to catch the blood and water in your mouth. That's pretty how that's how that's how bad it is. That's what they're saying, yeah. She is the new Eve leading all her children to the cross, the tree of life, to drink from Christ's open side the living waters of the Holy Spirit, the new wine of holy love. Well, Eve sinned, so really Mary is a big fat sinner, but the Catholic Church says she's holy. So if she if she sinned by saying she's the new Eve, she's Eve, well then she's, I mean, if they're saying she's Eve, the new Eve, or whatever they call it. Second Eve. Second Just Eve. Just like Jesus is the second Adam, Mary is the second Eve. So... And that's why he had to marry her. Good gosh, this is just so... Ugh. They have ugh. Jesus marrying his mother. Yeah, well... And that, they have everybody else drinking blood and water from Jesus' side that Mary gives to them. It's just... Ugh. <laughs> But the thing is, they just wrote in there, in that book, that Mary was a big fat sinner. Well, yeah, I have to. But, they, but I... they contradict themselves. Mary's yeah. supposed to be holy and pure and never lost her virginity and still a virgin and everything. But you're calling Mary a big fat sinner. Yep. We continue. How does a baptized person separate himself from full incorporation in the mystical body? Okay, Catholics believe that if you are part of the Catholic Church, you are part of the mystical body of Christ. And part of getting into that is you are baptized into the Catholic Church. That's why baptism is so important. But you can actually separate yourself as a baptized person from the mystical body of Christ. So how does that happen? You do that by open and deliberate heresy, apostasy, or schism. Okay, what does that mean? If the way you separate yourself by heresy is when you openly reject or doubt some doctrine proposed by the Catholic Church as a truth of divine Catholic faith, though still professing yourself to be a Christian. So basically, you're baptized into the body of Christ by being baptized in the Catholic Church, so now you're in. But if you reject or just doubt, openly doubt, some doctrine, doesn't matter what it is, some doctrine that the Catholic Church says is true, and you still profess yourself to be a Christian, then you've denied the faith and you're kicked out. You're no longer part of the body of Christ. So let me give you an example. A few years ago, the Pope gave a reprieve. Right now, they say abortion is a sin. You can't have an abort. You can't abort your own baby. But they've uh, a few years ago, the Pope gave a reprieve, and he allowed for a certain period of time for you to abort 
uh, abortion was okay for this certain period of time. This was the year of Jubilee, or the time of Jubilee. So I guess when you were celebrating Jubilee, it's okay to kill your own kids. That's what the Pope says. So here you are, a divine Catholic, all your whole life, and you've decided that that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense, and so you start to doubt. And you say something to somebody in church, and you say, you know, I don't really think that that's right, that what the Pope did about allowing abortion. Right there, by you doing that, you have committed heresy and you're out of the body of Christ. According to this book, that's true. Now, what about from schism? Well, the way you separate yourself from the body of Christ by schism is when you openly refuse obedience to the lawful authorities of the church, particularly to the Pope. So that's probably what Martin Luther did, you know. He dared to believe the Bible over what the Pope says, and so now he's um, separated by schism. All right, that was Lesson 12, Marks and Attributes of the True Church.